We're back to the Total Tutor Show, powered by the Beach Lifestyle Celebrity Segment. And I want to welcome somebody that's been on a little bit of a hiatus, and I'm so excited we'll be having him more in the summer again. My co-host, the main man, Simply G, GJ Reynolds, SimplyG.com. GJ, how are you? I'm doing fantastic, and I'm really excited about today's show. And, you know, if I'm going to come back off a hiatus, uh, you might as well start with the best, and today we got one of the best, and I'm pretty excited about that. And, you know, I'd say let's just jump right into it, um, Neil. So, you know, I'll just start the uh, introduction. Our, our guest today is he's an inv- he's an investor, he's a businessman, he's a self self help author. He's written over 15 books. I think there's, uh, um, you know, and each book has. Uh, I have every one of his books, including his new book that he's going to talk about. He's a motivational speaker. He's a financial literacy activist. And uh, he's had impact on me, and he doesn't even know it. And uh, most people know him from uh, the series that he's written, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Please welcome to the show, Robert Kiyosaki. How are you doing, Robert? Well, thank you. That's a great uh, introduction. I appreciate it. Yeah, he is the man for under introductions. I said, GJ, you go ahead and introduce him, and I- I'll I'll go ahead and uh, start with certain questions. Is that, have we missed anything about you, Robert? For background for our audience that might not know who you are, being the New York Times best-selling author and so well known in certain areas. Uh, you did pretty good. Yeah, uh, I, I, you know, basically, I grew up in Hawaii, and then that rich dad, poor dad is a story about my two dads. Uh, my real dad was head of education for the state of Hawaii, really smart guy, Ph.D. and all that. And my he was my poor dad, though, because you know, we don't teach much m- about money at school. And my rich dad was my best friend's father. And that's where the story comes from. So I grew up in Hawaii having these two fathers, one rich, one poor, and they say, they say very different things about money. Well, absolutely, and I agree. A lot of times, again, that's what we're going to be talking about today is financial literacy in so many ways, and and a lot of people who are educated never know how to utilize money in the correct way. They they use money in the wrong way. They're very well educated, but yet when it comes to finances, they don't understand. And, G, you've you've run into a lot of those people, haven't you, G? Right. Well, uh, well. Yeah, well, I run into it all the time, and obviously, you know, um, you know, that's one of the great things that you know Robert's done is that he's you know taught and written in a very simple way for people to understand and apply it. And most people are never taught how to be successful or taught how to be responsible with their money. So, um, you know, obviously, we got you know your new book, Robert. You know, why A students work for C students. I'm a C student, and I'm proud of it. And uh, the B and the B students work for the government. So, uh, what, what, why don't you tell us a little bit about your book, uh, which came out recently, and uh, how how it's doing, and and so a little bit more about it. And um, one thing before you do that, I've I, I've taught many many times the cash flow quadrant, and uh, it's been a very good tool for me in my own life, and it's been a great tool for uh, impacting other people. Um, Without your knowledge, so thanks for sharing it, and thanks for teaching me, and uh, I'm proud to say it works very well. Well, thank you very much. Again, I, I don't need to do an interview. You guys can take carry on. <laughs> 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 I can't praise myself that well because that wouldn't be fine. That wouldn't be uh, kosher. <laughs> so anyway, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So, it's so de- go ahead, G. So, so you're welcome, and. Uh, yeah, it's one thing for us to promote you. It's another thing when you do it yourself. It's bragging. So yeah. So, well, it's it's all well deserved. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about your current book and uh, the impact of it, and um, you know, um, so our audience can uh, learn more about it, and also where they can also go and find it and buy it. Well, thank you. Uh, why A students work for C students and B students work for the government is comes out of my concern for people who are parents with kids who are concerned about their kids' education, but also for young people maybe still in college. So this is that age bracket. Because as you know, the world is very, very different. The world is changing. So I'm very pro-education, but our school system is not changing. And because it's not changing, it's actually creating and pumping out more and more poor people 
who come out with this, in, this entitlement attitude, you know, the government owes us a living. And that's worldwide, not just the U.S. And that really concerns me because what's going to bring down America in the next two or three years is not uh, communism or terrorism. It's going to be entitlement. <laughs> I, 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 I agree. <laughs> it's all, it's all the old guys my age who would say, hey, where's my money? <laughs> exactly. And, and Neil and I had this, you know, Neil and I had a staff of, uh, of people, and we were, you know, we're talking about, you know, there's sometimes there's this entitlement, and we're like, okay, where's this entitlement come from? And, and you get it right on the head that it comes from the early ages of the of school and, and what we see on TV. And and so obviously your book addresses that. So I want you to show a bit more about, you know, the book. Um, and uh, obviously I'm dominating this uh, <laughs> this interview, uh, uh, Neil, so I apologize, Neil. No, that's fine. I'm, I'm interested in learning from both of you. You guys are all great entrepreneurs, and I'm just sitting and listening. So go ahead. <laughs> Tell us about the book. I, one thing I wanted to say, Robert, is financial literacy is so important and, and it's important to teach children about money and 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 something that our schools are missing and that's one reason you wrote the book right robert well if you look at the real world you know because school is not real world and that's my poor dad the phd you know and my rich dad always said to me he says you go to the bank and the banker doesn't ask you for your report card your banker asks you for your financial statement they don't, bankers don't care if you went to Harvard or flopped uh, school. They don't really care. They want to see your financials because your financials show your financial intelligence, your financial IQ. And 99.99% of kids coming out of high school have no idea what a financial statement is. And, you know, I talked to school teachers. I said, yeah, we teach them to balance checkbooks. I said, oh, my God. You know, I mean, are you guys still in the primitive? You're still dragging knuckles somewhere? You know, I just, I'm just going, where are you guys? And the, the problem is a school teacher has no idea what a financial statement is. And that's where it kind of begins. So if you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and your cash flow quadrant, you played my cash flow game, it's all about the financial statement because that's your report card when you grow up. And as you know, we're in severe financial trouble today, not because, I mean, it's because our leaders are screwed up also. I mean, you look at... Um, uh, I'm, not, I'm not Republican or Democrat, but our budgets are shot. You know, I know the stock market is up. It's only because Bernanke is printing trillions of dollars. So we're going to crash again in about two years, and then it's going to be hell to pay once again. And your kids are the ones that are going to pay for it. As you know, the rich get richer. That's why I'm saying there's no financial crisis. But the poor middle class get wiped out. So I wrote why A students work for B students, C students, and B students work for the government. It's because we have a bunch of idiots running the government. And if you're an idiot like them, then you're going to get wiped out with them. <laughs> Plain and simple. That's all I'm saying. So I'd rather take care of myself than hope that Mr. Obama or if it was Romney. I didn't really care who they were. I don't want them to take care of me. I'll take care of myself. Thank you. All right, G.J., your response to that. Well, I agree wholeheartedly, and I, I teach that you have to be responsible, especially in today's economic times, and we're we're in a, I call it the false market. Um, uh, and we, very false. And, and, and at some point, you know, you can only pump in so much falsicity. And as a business owner, as you know, if we ran our business the way the government's running the government, we would be bankrupt and, and we'd be, you know, having to start over. And unfortunately, I see that happening. So everything you're saying, I agree wholeheartedly. And I, unfortunately, it's a sad truth. So, you know, obviously education and teaching people how to, you know, um, you know, maneuver in these choppy waters and go, and it, it isn't happening in the schools. So we definitely have to do it outside the schools. And, and unfortunately, you know, how many people actually go and search out that information, you know, all the great information you've written about uh, over the years. Um, you know, that's why I was really excited about this interview because, you know, it's a great platform to teaching people. And that's really what we're all about is, teaching education of, of how to empower yourself and be responsible for yourself. And when you're empowering yourself, you're able to empower others. And, right. Uh, you because, because it, the schools are not going to teach your kids. I wrote why A students work for C students is, are for parents who, are, who actually are proactive at their kids' financial education, which most parents aren't. 
and I wrote it for kids in college, you know, because they're, they're coming out to a tougher world than I ever did. I'm, I'm a baby boomer. So the kids coming out of school today, you know, they're going to you know, get a high-paying job. I said, you got to be kidding me. you got to be kidding me. You know what I mean? So that's why I wrote the book, is if you're really concerned about education, then why A students work for C students is a very important book. It's just about education. So, so where can we go and find information about your book? Well, and the, obviously, your personal website as well. Right. Well, the books are on, you know, obviously Amazon.com, but most bookstores and all that. And um, I, I, like I said, I'm very, very concerned because um, I think we're going down in a couple of years. And if we're not prepared for it, I, uh, what the good news is you have a couple of years. You can, you can do things. And Mr. Bernanke right now, as you know, is just printing trillions of eight hundred, what, $85 billion a month or something. The Japanese just started it. And next, the Europeans are going to start printing money in mass. And if you sit there and hope Mr. Obama's going to save you, you know, he, he's not. I mean, I'm not Republican or Democrat, but he can't. It's impossible. You know, this has gone, what, we're, what we are doing today has been re- repeated through history from the time of the Romans. And that's why I say we don't learn anything about money at school. This baby is going down because the dollar is going down. And that's what people right. have to be aware of. Well, absolutely, Robert. Right. And uh, I, <clears throat> I think how can we teach our kids this early to, to make sure they understand this? You know, it's credit cards. Let's keep running up bills, and the government will bail us out. So how are there ways that in this book it could teach others Teach parents how to teach their kids this, and also administrators and teachers to teach their kids. Uh, don't, 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 don't waste your time, man. Our school system is corrupt. That's all I want. They're not, the teachers aren't much like poor dad. They're not bad people, but they really don't know anything about money. They're be able to ask me about childbirth. I don't know anything about that, you know? <laughs> so all I'm saying here is this. I wrote why A students work for C students very simply. My rich dad started teaching me about money when I was nine years old, playing Monopoly. You know, we all know the formula, four greenhouses, one red hotel. And today, that's all I do is I play Monopoly in real life. You don't have to play Monopoly. There's millions of ways you can get rich. You know, that kid who just sold his business to Yahoo or something for a billion bucks. He's a high school dropout. You know, his, his lack of education is killing him. <laughs> So there's more exactly. opportunity. There's more opportunity than ever before. Except that all I'm saying is that without financial education in schools, your kids are going to come out looking for a job, trying to save money when the government's printing the millions of dollars, billions and trillions of dollars, and then you're going to try and get out of debt when the rich are using debt. See, debt is the most powerful leverage there is, except people don't know how to use it. So everything they teach you in school is the stuff my poor dad taught me. And I would be a poor man if I followed his advice, which was, which was get a job, work hard, save money, get out of debt, buy a house, and put my money in mutual funds. I'd be broke today. You know, and that's really bad advice. There's better advice is all I'm saying. And I'm very concerned. You know, I think we're, in a, we're more than a financial crisis. We're an edu- education crisis. Well, and I agree with the education crisis. You could come on my show, Robert, to talk about that uh, uh, definitely another time. Uh, GJ, response again, because it seems like I'm interviewing two entrepreneurs that see the direction our, our, uh, our, our financial country's going. People, young people today, and not understanding money. Gee, it's just it's just a very, very difficult problem, isn't it? Well, it is, and, and it's out of control, and as Robert has you know articulated, and and now it's like okay, what what we, the the inevitable is the inevitable. So the key is, what do we do in the meantime? And and as Robert said, there's plenty of ways to be smart and create wealth and create. You know, if we do it the way we're being taught in schools and and through our government, then that's that's really the the wrong path. So you really got to go to the entrepreneur way and think like an entrepreneur. And unfortunately, most people are never taught how to think like an entrepreneur, as as we know. And and um, you know, I I I've always thought a little different, and I know entrepreneurs think a little different and think outside the box. And you know, instead of worrying about the grade, let's worry about the result. And that's really what um, I hear. You know, the C, the C students do. Um, so it goes back to what do we do? You know, um, what, what would be three steps that you'd recommend, Robert, 
to our listening audience that they can do right now to uh, move forward? Well, step one, obviously, I buy my book. And step two, at the end of every chapter, there are action steps a parent can do or a young person can do to improve their financial IQ. And number three is you've got to think differently. I mean, if you're following the instructions of go to school, get a job, work hard, save money, get out of debt, invest for the long term in a 401k, you're going to get hammered. They're going to get freaking hammered. And that's all I'm saying. It's, it's, it's going to be around 2016 or 2017. So you have time to take action right now. All I'm saying is this, is that, you know, that what the guy Yogi Berra, the famous New York Yankee, said, it's deja vu all over again. Sports fans, it is deja vu all over again. They're doing exactly the same thing that caused the economy to crash in 2002, 2007, and now it's going to be 2016. And so you can make money when markets crash. In fact, you make more money when markets crash. But if you're kind of buying, holding, and praying like they tell you to do, they'll probably get wiped out. So that's why I start teaching my kids early to start not being a sheep going, eh, you know, because you know what happens to sheep. Anyway, that's, right. my, that's my advice. Okay, Robert, again, information by where we can purchase the book and learn more about you. Well, it's Amazon.com, as a lot of them. Every bookstore has it. Again, it's why A students work for C students. And it's by Robert Kiyosaki. You know, it's, um, it's a Rich Dad series of books. And it's about time, if you don't start teaching your kids to be rich, they're going to join the middle class, and, you know, both Obama and Romney said they're going to save the middle class. And when politicians promise to save you, you know you better stand up, bend over, and kiss it goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, see, the good, the good news is it's when markets crash, that's when you really get rich. And that's so counterintuitive to what people say. And the last thing I'll say is your banker has never asked you for your report card. Your banker wants to see your financial statement. And most people leave school, A students included, they don't know what a financial statement is. They ought to be looking for a job working for some rich guy. That's nuts. Understand completely, Robert. And uh, last thing, last question, and GJ will ask this question because this is what we do. Anyone that comes on the show, GJ, give him the magic question and hear what he has to say. Well, we always ask, the, ma- the magic question we always ask is, you know, what is your 90-day challenge goal? So with everything that's going on in your life, what's your focus for the next 90 days? Well, I'm going to go to Africa and have a good time. <laughs> that's it, man. It's, look, if you have more money coming in than money is going out, whether you work or not, then you can get on with life. It's called freedom. And, you know, Lincoln set the set slaves free, and now I'm trying to set the employees free. <laughs> well, I, I like this, Robert. All right. So, well, I'm going right. to have a good time for the next 90 days. Well, you, you might you might be seeing my in-laws. They're going to Africa in July, so uh, you might uh, run into <laughs> I'll be in Johannesburg. Okay. Well, thanks for calling, Robert, and uh, we'll stay in touch, okay? Right. Thanks for the time, you guys. Good All right, luck. Take care. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you, Robert. Bye. Bye. You listen to the Total Tutor Show, powered by the Beach Lifestyle Celebrity Segment. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 